the responsibility for promoting, explaining or even contesting a budget doesn't rest entirely with the leaders, the treasurer, the shadow treasurer. It's actually a full team effort. So we're going to check in now with two front benches who will also put their shoulders to the wheel in their respective causes. Jane Prentice is an Assistant Minister for Social Services and Disability and Claire O'Neill is Shadow Justice for Labor. So um, starting first of all I suppose with where the Treasurer uh, left off there Jane Prentice uh, clearing the decks of these zombie measures he's really calling out to the Parliament to to move on from the fighting of the last three years. From your knowledge of politics is that going to occur? Uh, yes, I think it will. I mean, we've put out um, a budget that I think is about uh, opportunity, jobs. There are a lot of jobs involved through the infrastructure projects. And I think it's uh, a budget that takes us forward into the future. It's set out very clearly in the pathway to a surplus in 2021. And through that, we've got uh, the infrastructure, we've got uh, big ticket items like the Snowy Hydro, the Inland Rail, major uh, efforts in the capital cities. That all delivers jobs. And that goes hand in hand with uh, other things such as the trade agreements, which are starting to kick in with growth in our exports. Uh, there's opportunities for people. And, and that's it's a good news budget. All right. Well, Claire, politics has been at loggerheads on some really big issues uh, uh, since 2014. Clearing out $13 billion worth of zombie measures, is there at least ground now for some meeting in the middle? Well, I think it's important to note that not all the zombie measures have come out of the budget, Greg. So one of the ones that remains, for example, is the increase to the pension age to 70, and there are several others that still remain in the budget. The critical point, though, is that those zombie measures were offensive to Labor and offensive to Australians because they were fundamentally unfair. And that critical unfairness still remains in this budget. Um, this is a budget that is raising taxes on ordinary Australians in order to give tax cuts to the big banks and tax cuts to the biggest multinationals in this country. It cuts funding to, to schools. It doesn't do anything to protect Australians and their health care. Um, so I just argue that although some specific measures have been taken away, that unfairness still remains the centrepiece. So when you talk about tax increases, you're obviously including there the increase in the Medicare levy, which yeah. the government government says is uh, purely to fund the gap mm. with the National Disability Insurance Scheme. I take it you don't buy that, but uh, more importantly, what's the alternative? Where is NDIS left mm. if that funding gap is not addressed by additional sure. revenue? Yeah, well, I was interested to see in Scott Morrison's address, he spent a good 10 minutes, I think, talking about the NDIS as though it was his idea. This is a Labor initiative. It's um, something that needs to be executed on by a Labor government because, frankly, I don't think the Liberals' hearts are in it. And I think that's reflected with this ongoing conversation about the funding of this scheme. This scheme was fully funded from day naught. The 2013-14 budget shows clearly how the funding was going to be rolled out for the scheme. All the way through to 2027. That's exactly right, Greg. It's in the 2013-14 budget papers. But I'll just say, let's remember in the context of all these conversations about what can and can't be afforded in the budget, that this is a government that's found room to give a $50 billion tax cut to the biggest companies in this country. Yeah. Jane, this is actually in your portfolio area. So is. your head's probably full of the numbers. Can I just ask you as a as a Liberal, was it confronting to have to come to a landing point on this where tax increases were the answer? Because this wasn't in the Liberal script as recently no. as two or three years well, ago. And as you know, we put up many, many opportunities for savings because we wanted to be able to fund NDIS through savings, not through tax. Uh, but at the end of the day, the Liberal Party, the Coalition, was always committed to fully funding NDIS but we hadn't settled on how. We set up our independent savings fund so that we quarantine funding. And once again, that's where lab, what Labor failed to do. They, they sort of pointed at sort of pigs flying in the sky and saying, oh, we're going to pick that little bit of savings. But it never went into a fund for NDIS. And that money was actually used more times than once uh, to fund various promises. And in fact, if you look at the estimates from that budget, uh, the Treasury officials admit that there is no evidence of where NDIS could be funded from. The Liberals were always, the Coalition was always committed to funding NDIS, but we hadn't settled on how. So to give people certainty, and we're dealing pe with people here with disability, the most vulnerable in our community, and we wanted to give them certainty that the funding would be secure, and that's why we've uh, gone to this levy to make sure that people out there know not only are committed, but the funding's secure, it's going to be quarantined, and they can rely on the fact 
that th they or their children with disability will be cared for. So noting your argument, Claire, that it's Labor's firm belief that it was fully funded. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you about the, the principle, though, that's been espoused by the Treasurer there? He's spoken about chipping in for this compassionate cause, appealing to the idea that Australians would find generally acceptable a tax increase when it's put to a good purpose. Mm. Do you broadly buy that argument? Do you think Australians are on that page? Uh, Greg, I, I do, and we know that they are because they already have paid a tax increase to partly fund the National Disability Insurance scheme. Remember, part of the, the, the um, most substantial single piece of funding that Labor put in place for the National Disability Insurance Scheme was an increase to the Medicare levy. Now, what we're saying is, why is the government prioritising giving a tax cut to the biggest businesses in the country and yet crying poor when it comes to the NDIS? So I just want to make sure your viewers understand what's going on here. The central mission of this budget is to increase taxes for ordinary Australians and cut taxes for millionaires and multinationals. That's really what's happening. This is an argument that's raged since this time last year. Jane, are you prepared to weather this constant Not at all. argument no, Greg, around the corporate tax? Clearly the budget is about jobs. It's about opportunities and it's about jobs. And that's what we're trying to create, whether it's through tax cuts, which will create more jobs, uh, whether it's through our infrastructure plan, which will create more jobs. So you've got uh, the expenditure which we need to support people in education and in welfare and all those budgets are increasing or you've got the infrastructure plans which will deliver uh, major infrastructure for Australia but more importantly jobs and growth particularly for regional Australia it's very important that we don't we don't think about the capital cities in southeast Australia we need to think about our regional areas sure let's move on to something where I think there is agreement or there appears to be which is the bank levy six billion dollars worth uh, no hesitation around this from Labor's point of view it appears Claire even in the face of bank retaliation what do you think voters will think of of banks who seek to pass on oh, either think, to shareholders think, or to customers? I think they're going to be incredibly um, annoyed about it as as Labor will be and I have to say I think that you know past behaviour of the bank suggests that they're probably just going to pass this on to consumers now that's going to be um, a slap in the face to um, all Australians, basically. But do you think but, they should go ahead, Parliament should go yeah, ahead and do it anyway? Uh, I do, I do. I think this is a measure that's going to go some way to um, uh, to correcting some of the issues that we see. But uh, it's, it's important to note, Greg, that this is not going to get to the heart of what is the problem with the banks. And this is a very important uh, smoke and mirrors routine on behalf of Malcolm Turnbull, who's doing everything he can to help the banks avoid a Royal Commission. We know there are significant cultural problems within this sector. Uh, the only way to address them is through a Banking Royal Commission. So we're happy to support this levy that's going to be charged to the banks, but we need to go a lot further, and the vast majority of Australians agree with that principle. So even, Jane, with the cover of Labor's support, you must have a, a plan for some blowback directed ag at, against the government, not just the parliament, but the government, by the banks. Well, equally, as Claire said, we'd be very disappointed if the banks passed it on. They've got no need to whatsoever. The top five banks uh, are making a profit of $30 billion a year at the moment. Um, you know, their CEOs are being paid $12 million and upwards, some of them. Mm. So uh, there's absolutely no excuse for passing it on. But, Jane, you do agree that they probably will pass it on, don't you? Well, I understand today that they've suggested they, uh, that one of them has suggested mm. they will. We've got to look at the fact that the levy's not on their liabilities. It's not on uh, investment accounts and, tr and uh, deposit accounts by their customers. Uh, but, of course, customers can change banks if they want to. Equally, though, the, the government has funded uh, more money into the ACCC to look at bank behaviour and has set up uh, bodies to make sure that the banks uh, are more transparent in their behaviour. Uh, but I, I hope that public opinion will force the banks not to pass it on because there's no need for them to do so. Is there a bit of post-Trump, post-Brexit thinking at large in the coalition on this now? Because it, it wouldn't have been considered uh, traditional liberal policy until, well, in fact, you argued against some of this stuff uh, all the way up until this budget. Well, we, What's we've, got, we, we've got two things that are happening. We've got a Senate uh, and we've been given a Senate by the people of Australia. But the Senate uh, is a, a complex body these days. It's not just Liberal and Labor. There's a whole lot of other parties as well. And uh, the bottom line with the Senate is that they uh, won't automatically pass the government's uh, policies and uh, neither they need to, but uh, gone are the days when you had a majority in both uh, the House and the Senate. So uh, we have that challenge. We've had $13 billion of savings rejected 
by the Senate. So we need to look at other ways because we do need to get back into a surplus budget. Okay. And so that's why we need to go down this path. All right. Just finally, uh, on a values proposition, I suppose there's a strong uh, welfare compliance measure in this budget, including penalties for job seekers who don't show up for uh, interviews, uh, some drug testing trial. What do you think about uh, about squeezing this lemon? There is a balance, isn't there, mm. between uh, money well spent on the welfare budget versus getting too hard against uh, those in difficult mm. circumstances? Well, I, I mean, I just speak from a personal point of view because we're still digesting some of these policies, but I just think it's pathetic that w whatever opportunity there is, the government goes after the people who have the least and then um, finds a way to give the people who have the most a, an easy ride. And I think this is just more of the same. Like, why are we focusing on these people? Um, they're, 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 you know, to the extent that people are um, badly behaved and on welfare, it's a really small part of the overall problem of the budget. Uh, it's nowhere near, for example, the $50 billion that the government's going to um, splash around the, the biggest businesses in this country. So I've got an issue with it. And I'll just make the point as well, Greg, I think there are very... Um, well evidenced connections between things like homelessness and substance abuse and mental illness. And here we have a government that's, you know, um, telling us it's doing all these fantastic things for people who are homeless and mentally ill, yet when it comes to welfare and um, drug dependency, they're, you know, bringing out the big hammer. And I just think there's not a consistent message here. And Jane, just wrapping that up, are you comfortable with No, no, measures? because when you look into the detail, what you find is there's no cut in the budget. The, the welfare budget stays the same or increases. It's trying to identify and help these people. Oh, that's... And that's what we're about, is trying to simplify it for them to help them and support them. Because at the end of the day, most people want a job. They're getting payments from taxes. That's Australian taxpayers' hard-earned money. But we need to make sure it's going in the right way to help people in the right way. If they have a substance abuse problem, we need to help them. It shouldn't just be, I'll oh, let them stay on the job mm. support program. We need to move them into one of our programs to help them recover. Well, and, and instead of taking away their income, I'd just suggest something like rehab beds might be a better space to go to if you're really concerned well, about Well, we've increased with money for homelessness and, and those other areas. Yeah, and, well, and well you're going to have to because that's mm. what these reforms will ultimately lead All to. All right. Well, look, on that note, I do have one eye on the clock, uh, on your behalf, in fact, because Thank you do you, have to make it to yes. the House of Representatives for question time. So Jane Prentice and Claire O'Neill, thanks talk. for your thoughts thanks, on Jane. Thanks, Greg. this thanks, budget Greg. one thanks, day Claire. on.